BBC News with Sue Montgomery. President Zelensky has said Ukraine will have to keep pushing to be supplied with modern tanks after a meeting of allied nations ended without an agreement to provide them. He said it was obvious that the West would have to give Ukraine the tanks it needed to repel the Russians. Germany has insisted that it's not blocking the delivery of German-made Leopard tanks, which other countries want to send. The BBC's Steve Rosenberg says the Allies' inability to agree has gone down well in Moscow. The Russians will be pleased that so far there is no agreement to send uh, American or German battle tanks uh, to Ukraine. Interestingly, in this morning's edition of the, the Russian government newspaper, there was a warning to Germany and to the German Chancellor. The paper said that no one knows better than the German Chancellor what happened the last time that Germany sent uh, armour towards the Russian borders, meaning World War II. So a very strong message, and the Russians, as I say, will be pleased, I think, that no German tanks for the moment will be sent to Ukraine. The United States has said it's designating the Russian mercenary group Wagner as a transnational criminal organization. The national security spokesman John Kirby said Wagner was committing atrocities and human rights abuses in Ukraine and elsewhere. He added that intelligence indicated growing tension between the mercenary group and the Russian Ministry of Defense. We continue to assess that Wagner currently has approximately 50,000 personnel deployed to Ukraine, including 10,000 contractors and 40,000 convicts. Our information indicates the Russian Defense Ministry has reservations about Wagner's recruitment methods. Despite this, we assess that it is likely that Wagner will continue to recruit right out of Russian prisons. Anti-abortion activists are rallying in Washington for the 50th annual March for Life, calling for further restrictions on the termination of pregnancies. It's the first such event since the Supreme Court overturned the Roe v. Wade decision that had recognised a woman's constitutional right to abortion. Twelve states have since enforced bans. The White House Press Secretary, Karine Jampier, said the Biden administration wouldn't let up in the fight to protect people's rights. We want to make sure that we continue to underscore the ongoing attacks on women's rights to make their own health care decision. This is something that the Biden-Harris administration has taken very seriously. Uh, this is something that you have heard us take action, executive action on. And this is something that, an issue that we're going to continue to ask Congress to make sure that they take actions on this as well. The authorities in the Democratic Republic of Congo have called for central government assistance after a boat with about 150 passengers on board capsized on the Lulonga River. 55 people were rescued on Wednesday. BBC News. The Bolivian government has announced that a consortium led by a major battery-producing company from China has won a bidding process to explore the South American country's huge lithium reserves. The Chinese company CATL is the world's main manufacturer of batteries for electric vehicles. Here's Leonardo Rocha. Bolivia's president, Luis Arce, hailed it as a historic day for Bolivia as it marks, in his words, the beginning of the industrialization of lithium in the country. The consortium would invest over a billion dollars on the first stage of the program, which includes the construction of roads and infrastructure in the south of the country. Other companies from China, Russia and the United States took part in the bidding process. More than two-thirds of the world's known lithium reserves are found in the salt flats of Bolivia, Argentina and Chile, known as the Lithium Triangle. State television and a security source in Burkina Faso say 62 women and four babies kidnapped late last week have been freed. The women and children were taken by Islamist militants from a location with a heavy jihadist presence. Police in Northern England have fined the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for failing to wear a seatbelt while a passenger in a moving car. It happened when he was filming a political clip for Instagram. His office said Mr Sunak fully recognised that not wearing the seatbelt was a mistake and that he apologised. The main opposition party, Labour, earlier said that a fine would be very serious, as Mr Sunak also had to pay a penalty for breaching Covid lockdown rules while Mr... The Italian football club Juventus has had 15 points deducted by a court investigating its transfer dealings. The Turin-based club were in third place in Serie A, but the deduction will push them down into mid-table. BBC News.